Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing the No Disclaimers tag. So this was created by Catalyst Reads, and I was tagged in the original video. I would show you some footage actually, but he just tagged me in the description. But here's Catalyst Reads introducing his tag. Hello Booktube, hope you're all doing well today. In this video I'm going to be doing an original tag called the No Disclaimers book tag. Well there we go. Alright, so as usual there are a bunch of questions. In this one there are nine questions. I have a bunch of books, excuse me, and I'm going to go through these nine questions, answer them to the best of my ability, and then I'll tag some people. So let's go. Question number one. My phone vibrated and I'm sitting on it. Which trope or tropes in books annoy you the most? So. To represent this, I've gone for Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. And basically, for me, it's like, it's the normalisation of cheating. So when you have a love triangle, for example, and, you know, there's a girl having sex with a married man or whatever, like, because... Personally, I've been cheated on various times. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that, we're not gonna go- this isn't like, uh... Jeremy Kyle or whatever your American equivalent is. Cheating isn't good. It, is, it's, it makes me sad that people do that. And this book is one of many books that I've read where they've made cheating seem almost like sexy and attractive, you know, and it's just like, whenever I read it, I'm just like, these are awful people. They're being like really unfair and horrible to each other. That makes me sad. That makes me sad. We need to stop that happening in books. I actually don't like romance etc in books anyway. There's a great Terry Pratchett quote where somebody asked him uh, why there's no sex in the Discord and he said there is, it just happens after the last page. You don't need like drama filled love triangles and sex and all this stuff to make something interesting. For me that just makes it boring. Rant over. Question number two, which writer or writers do you feel are overrated or overhyped? Now, Technically, I've kind of gone for quite an obscure writer, and the only book of his that I actually have is this one here, but I've gone for Cory Doctorow. And the reason being is because everyone always tells me I should like Cory Doctorow, because he writes about technology and that kind of thing. And I kind of write about technology as well, and I find tech and all this kind of stuff quite interesting, but Doctorow's stuff has just never gripped me. Everything that I've read that he's either like written himself or even that he's worked on has just been bad. And I don't understand why, like, why he even, like, why anyone even knows his name. He's not that good. <laughs> Question number three. What are your least favourite books you've read since joining Booktube? Well, this is a controversial one, but this is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. And I have actually filmed a full review of this book, which I haven't got around to sharing yet. But in that, I explain why I didn't like this. It was just overhyped. The uh, illustrations in this version by Jim Kay were great. And okay, there's a nice story behind the story, but I'm not going to like a book just because the story behind it is better than the book itself, you know. I, I, I just thought it was fairly badly written. It reminded me of R.L. Stein, but like... Not as good. <laughs> Question number four, a terrible ending that ruined an otherwise quality book. Now I wouldn't say this ruined the book, but I'm going for the Under the Dome by Stephen King. And as you can see, this is a very long book as well. And the ending of it, the ending's just cheap. It's just after all this stuff happens, the ending just is, it's almost abrupt in like the last 20, 30 pages. And King does this quite often in his books actually. But all the way along, you're kind of under the impression that this dome is impenetrable and you can't change it and all this stuff. And then at the end, it's basically the same as just someone goes up to a computer and just turns it off or something. It's just, you know, that's not a spoiler, by the way, because that's not what happened. But it's equivalent to that in terms of, you know, it was as if I'd got to the end and then he just said, and then he woke up and it was a dream. I did still like this book though. Question number five, which fictional character or characters do you wish were not killed off? Now this is an old standby of mine, I'm going for Northern Lights by Philip Pullman, and this is the Golden Compass in North America as well. And uh, he doesn't actually get killed off in this book, he gets killed off a little bit later, but Lee Scoresby man, Lee Scoresby. If you've read the His Dark Materials trilogy, you know what I'm talking about here, Lee Scoresby. And, and Hester, was it Hester? His, his bunny rabbit demon. Oh, the humanity. <laughs> I think I just compared the death of a fictional character to the Hindenburg disaster, which is a bit, bit extreme. Oh, well. Okay, question number six. What are some of your bookish pet peeves? 
This one's easy. It's when it's not been edited, and you see this a lot in indie and self-published authors, and they try and cut corners by not getting an editor, and it's just death for the book. If you don't get an editor on your book, you might as well not publish it. That's the truth. And actually, me and Todd from Todd the Librarian are going to try and read some um, indie books from smaller booktubers, but I'm going to try and ascertain before we do that whether it's been edited or not, because if it hasn't been edited, it will get a bad review from me, and I don't want to do that to YouTubers who I actually like. Question number seven. What are some books you feel should have more recognition. Well, obviously I'm going to go for one of my own books and I've gone for formerly The Rise and Fall of a Social Network. And I call this uh, literary fiction, but I don't know if it is really. Maybe you would just call it contemporary. It's a bit sort of techie, but it's set in our world. Basically, formally is a social network that when you sign up to it, you post updates and they're invisible. And then when you die, your profile then goes live to the world. And this follows what happens to the staff of formally and to some of the people who use the site. Question number eight. What are your thoughts on censorship and banning books? In my notes for this, I've just written, Pfft. yeah, no to censorship. Censorship of any form pretty much is bad. Final question, question number nine, who do you tag? So knowing that this tag was created by Catalyst Reads and that he tagged a bunch of people, I'm going for kind of people in the community that are kind of apart from Catalyst Reads, I guess. You know, there are all these different sub communities and all this. So anyway, I'm going for Kit Kats Can Read, Books Are My Heart, and peachy fishy books. So there we have it. That was the no disclaimers tag. This was an original tag by Catalyst Reads. I suggest checking out his video if you haven't already. And in the meantime, if you would like to see more bookish videos, please hit subscribe. Let me know with a comment your thoughts on my choices for these questions. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye.